In this video, I want to talk about the mechanism of vasopressin um, or ADH, which is a hormone that's synthesized in your hypothalamus and stored in your posterior pituitary where it's also released. So um, before I get into anything, vasopressin basically facilitates the absorption of water when you have low blood volume or low blood pressure. And even when you have high um, levels of salt or sodium in your body. So it's, it's responsible for maintaining water volume. And to give you an idea of where we are here, we're in the kidney. We're zoomed in at a cellular level of your uh, collecting or distal duct, depending on where this is happening, because this process can happen in either place. And we're talking about how vasopressin works. So once vasopressin is released, for whatever reason, maybe you have low blood pressure or low blood volume or even high levels of salt, again, like I said, it's going to bind to its receptor on the basolateral membrane. And what, basolateral, the, what the basolateral membrane basically means is it's the blood side of the membrane. So if you, you have trouble remembering this, I always think of it as the B in basolateral is the B in, is for the B in blood. So I never forget it that way. And this side is called the apical plasma membrane and it's the side of the membrane that faces the cytosol of the cell rather than the blood. So once vasopressin binds to its receptor, it's going to activate the cyclic AMP or CAMP, which is a second messenger pathway which takes a longer time usually. I'm not gonna go over second messenger pathways in this video. Um, I'm just gonna go over what happens uh, during this process. So once CAMP is activated, it's going to facilitate the water absorption by creating those aquaporine two channels on the apical plasma membrane. Now you see here that there are aquaporine channels, aquaporine three and four here, but those are permanently uh, attached to the basolateral plasma membrane. However, on this side, um, the apical membrane, those aquaporin 2 channels are not always there. So what CAMP is going to do is essentially it's going to uh, attach those aquaporin 2 channels so the apical membrane uh, just um, temporarily for the water to diffuse through. So once those are here, water will diffuse through and it's going to diffuse out of the aquaporine three and four channels and into the interstitial fluid here and of course into your capillary and it's going to be reabsorbed into your system rather than um, staying in the collecting duct and going to your renal system where it would be excreted. So here you could you could see that those aquaporine two channels are are only I want to I want to make sure you guys know that they're only temporary. So once your water balance levels are back to normal, those are going to disappear. But those are always permanent. So I just listed them out for you the steps here. So first things first, vasopressin binds to its receptor on the basolateral membrane of the distal or collecting duct of the kidney, again, wherever it's happening. Then camp, camp is activated and it facilitates water absorption by creating aquaporin 2 channels on the apical membrane. And then water is going to diffuse through the cytosol and out through the aquaporin 3 and 4 channels, which are permanently located on the basolateral membrane and travels into the interstitial fluid. And that is it for the vasopressin mechanism of action.